Hey Power Rappers, this is Brian Knight again from Pragmatic Works, and in today's video, we're going to focus on making your app responsive. We're going to use containers to solve that problem, although there are a number of ways you can solve this problem. So, so stay tuned, and this is the first video in our series on responsive applications. One of the big requests we see out there is how do in the world do I make my Power App more responsive? So Power Apps have this native ability to work on any application surface that you wish, whether it be an iPad, a, a Android, or a PC or a Mac. Now, in this case, though, it may not look appropriate on that certain device. And that's what this video is all about. It's the first video in a series on UI tips to make your app more responsive. So let's take a look at our application right now. We have nothing in our application other than the actual size and the height and the width right here. Now, first thing I want to show you is what, the reason why we're going to set one of these settings. If I play this application right now and I kind of skinny it down, you'll notice that my resolution down here continues to say the wrong resolution no matter what size I'm at. This is because the native behavior in Power Apps is to, auto, is to automatically fill the space, to, to scale it appropriately here. Now, while that works remarkably well for most devices, this is why you see on your phone, for example, it shows a, a tablet version of your app scaled down for your phone. If we want to fix that or change that, not only really fix it, but to change it, we can go to our settings up top and go to display, and we'll flip this scale to fit to off. Now, once you do that, it'll also change the lock aspect ratio as well. And after you do that, you'll notice that when I play the application, it's scaled up in this case to 1871 on my monitor. And as I skinny it down, now we're at 600 and so on and so on and so on and so on. Perfect. Okay, now this resolution has breakpoints along the way of where you can code this application. So for example, I'll just drop another label in here. Here we go. And what I'll do is I'll drop in, I'll say app.active screen, which is the current screen I'm looking at, dot size. Now let's see what happens now. It says the number four right here. We'll see what that means in a moment here. I'm going to play this application. I'm going to go ahead and skinny this down. Now we're looking at three. Now we're looking at, oh, that's not responsive yet. That's what now we're looking at two and so on. So those numbers correspond with a small, medium, large, extra large kind of number. To find out what those match up to, I can go to the, the app right here on the left side, go to your right, and you'll see on the advanced properties right there, size breakpoints. So we have one size breakpoint, number one will be a 600, 900, and 1200, and everything after that as well. And I can do comma and keep on adding more if I wanted to as well. Uh, between, you know, anywhere between this. If I want to break breakpoint at 800 pixels, you can absolutely do that. So these all correspond with the size. So when you see four right now, that means we're above the property. Okay, so four would be above that 1200. That's why it's showing it to us. All right, so it's a relatively large application in this case. So we can use those two metrics to kind of key what we show and what we hide in our application. Now, the key to a lot of this is going to be containers. Containers allow you to build a responsive app from day one. If you're an HTML person, this is going to feel like div tags, essentially, where you have containers and div tags inside of your HTML doc. So inside of this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the plus button over here. And you can find this a number of ways, but let me go ahead and search for containers. You'll see it under layouts here, but if you search for it, I'm going to drop a horizontal container in here just so you guys can see what this, what this makes up. I'm going to bring it up the top left. I'm going to make my height, there we go, app.height, I mean occupy every ounce of space I have inside this. Then I'll go over to width, and as you can imagine, we'll do the same thing there, app.width. Okay, good enough. Now it's occupying every vertical and horizontal space we have. So app dot means look at the application. What is the surface area of your user and scale it down or scale it up based on what you have there. Now that we have that, we can go ahead and if you wanted to, this, this property has some interesting controls. You can go ahead and color code it. You can do all sorts of neat stuff here. So the whole thing looks a little bit more, you know, 
whatever lifelike here, and we can see what we're doing. Now, additionally here, let me go ahead and drop in a few shapes or buttons so we can kind of play along. So I'm gonna go to my plus button and I'll look for a rectangle. There we go, there's my rectangle. I'll drop in, how about four of them, just so we can kind of play. And then I'll color code these. Let me make one of these. I'll change the color, let me get my face so you can see this. Uh, I'll make the first color. Let's go ahead and make that maybe a dark red. I'll do my second color as some other color. Oh, wrong one, there we go. Let's make that yellow, and then my last one will be whatever. Okay, color, there we go. I'll make that one just a nice bright green one here. So that should that should definitely uh, look a little like Skittles now, right? All right, so now, my purpose in doing that is I wanna show you some of the properties that we have inside this container. So first of all, all right, when I look at the container to keep on occupying every space inside this, and we can nest containers, so we can put a container inside of a container. And we'll do that in a moment when we build our home screen. But for this container right here, let's go ahead and let's select maybe the red square here and let's see some of the properties we have inside of this. First of all, on the right side, you're seeing that there are some properties here that allow you to have, uh, say, am I gonna go ahead and interpret my size from the container and my alignment? Or am I gonna be, uh, I'm gonna override some of this stuff? Well, if I go ahead and set flexible width, watch what happens. So I have four, four rectangles right now and if I change it to flexible width this one is going to occupy all that blank space we had on the right okay we can also you know increase the size of it horizontally and all sorts of stuff for this one object here we would just go ahead and say custom and then we can overwrite you know any of our settings here for this one object we can make it 150 for example and you'll see it actually uh, it goes back to the size of the other one all right so now we're occupying every space inside of this let me go ahead and revert that flexible width back and I wanna show you a few more things. I'm just gonna copy and I'll just go ahead and paste a few times here. There we go. Now, you're noticing now that I'm a little bit off the screen now. So there's a few things we can do about that. One thing is we can wrap the icons uh, so it shrinks and compresses based on that. To do that, I'll select the whole container and I'll select wrap on the whole container. Now it actually wraps that text and shows us the buttons or the text on the, on, the, on the next row down. We could also, by the way, in this property, change our gap to create a gap between each of these squares. And I'll put like 15, for example, so you can kind of see it this way. And on this container, we can also say uh, horizontally, I want to center it. I want to make it right just to find. I want to go, you know, kind of uh, make it where it's a whole, occupying the whole space. We can also vertically do that bottom or we can stretch it like this to where it stretches and it uses every ounce of the space that we have as well. All right, so those are our little pieces about the containers. Now we can use this for our own bidding as we get into this. There's lots of things we can do. I just wanna kind of give you a level set to make sure you're all good on the first step before we actually try to use and consume this. Uh, so we showed you how to wrap. We showed you that if it can't fit that in space, that it also will go ahead and hide those buttons also. We can also tell it to scroll though if you wanted to keep on showing those buttons. All right, so this lets us do some really, really interesting things. So let's actually apply this to our screen one, our main screen now. So again, our first step is to make sure that we drop our container in. So I'm just gonna go ahead and go to our plus button here and drop our container. And I'll make this again a horizontal container. I'll again have it occupy every ounce of space that we have. Uh, but in the end, I'm just gonna go over to the height and the width, and I'm gonna make sure it says app.height. That's our first step, and then of course the width as well. So it's gonna occupy every ounce as I shrink and compress it. Okay, there we go. So now that we've done that, we're now set to actually try to use that space. So let's go ahead and drop an image in. Now I happen to grab any kind of image out there that, from the, from, that I use on a regular basis, so let me go ahead and drop in, first of all, this, this lovely image of some elementary school kids doing their thing here. I'm gonna make the height of this image, all right, I'll take it from 100 to app dot, or sorry, I'm gonna go to parent.height. In other words, occupy every ounce of space I have. Parent, for this image, as you can see in the, uh, the, the screen view here, the parent is the container. And the parent of the container, is a screen. 
and and so on and so on and so on. So you can kind of nest these things and, and create a whole test here for you. Now in my case, I'm gonna tell it to go ahead and be flexible width here. So it occupies all that space, but we're about to add some more things that make it a little cleaner. I'm also gonna go ahead and drop in, uh, as I do this, I'm gonna drop in a label. You'll see it immediately kind of gives some space away for that. I'm gonna drop in a couple buttons. Oh, oh, I see the problem already. I want to see these buttons more as horizontal. So how do I accomplish that? Let me go ahead and kill these buttons here and kill my label. So what I'm going to do, first of all, I want to drop in another container here. So let me go ahead and search for the container. Oh, no, no, sorry. Let me go to the plus button and search for container. And this time I'll do a, a, a vertical container. Now you'll see it occupies 50-50 space right now, which may not be what you want. In my case, um, what we can do is we can actually make this a little more adventurous in a moment here, but let's go ahead and drop in our labels, our buttons, button, button, another label, and maybe one more button. So this is going to be two sections of the app. So I'm gonna, this is like our home screen of the application. And you can see immediately how it doesn't look very responsive right now, but it is. If I hit the play button, you can see as I skinny it down, it kind of stacks accordingly. It looks terrible right now, but you get the idea, right? It's kind of shrinking, compressing that image. All right, so let's go ahead and clean this up now. Of course, I like this image, but I think it's, it's not occupying enough space right now. So first of all, I'm gonna change this fit to a fill, so it occupies the whole space. So my little guy right here, it looks, looks like it's looking like he's uh, uh, occupying the whole space there. I think we also maybe want to go ahead and put a some gap logic inside of here. So maybe go to my first container, and you can always, of course, con you know, label these. I'll call this container main or whatever you want to call it. I, I you know, C-O-N main, there we go. So for this container, I'm gonna go ahead and put a gap of some sort. Maybe I'll do like 20 pixels, so it kind of steps that back a little bit. And then for my image inside of here, what do we want to do about that image? Well, if it's small enough, it would be nice to kind of size this down to where it's not occupying quite so much space. But ideally, if I have the real estate, let's eat up 70% or 80% of the app. But if it's skinny is down, maybe it only occupies 20% of the app. So let's go ahead and look at the what the width property of this image. Okay. And you can see it's occupying right now. Oh, that is, make sure I'm on, I'm on the image. So if I were to happen to make this, you know, 500, for example, nothing's really going to happen right now. So if I say parent.width, it's going to occupy as much space as the parent allows. But the parent is not allowing it to do that space. So let's go over to our container here and let's see what we want to do with this container. Right now it's app.width. That looks pretty darn good. So if we wanted to, we can go ahead and adjust this accordingly. So right now we have a set by container. Let's go ahead and override this. And now our width setting will be a little more appropriate. So if I were to make this like 900, for example, whoop, okay, I need a minimum width here, excuse me. It went ahead and overwrote this again. So let me go ahead and say to, uh, to do custom. And minimum width here is gonna be, let's try 900. There we go, and see how, how it increases the size of that now automatically. So this is the minimum width here. We can see it here, it's a layout min width property. So one thing we can do is we can say, you know what, if I'm on a small screen, let's skinny this down. So let's try that now. The way we can do that is we can say if app.activescreen, uh, app there we go, dot size, is greater than, let's say, two. If it's greater than the, the small and medium size checkpoint, then let's go ahead and have this occupy app.width times, let's do 70%. Otherwise, let's do app.width times, so that will do to 20%, something like that. So now, as uh, let me go ahead and drop a label in so you guys can see this. I'm going to go ahead and drop another label in over here. All right, and we'll just call this app.activescreen.size. You can see right now, we have an active screen of four right now. So if I hit the play button, okay, right now it says four, I'm gonna go ahead and skinny that down, and that we can see it actually, that, that container dropped off, but look how it automatically shrunk that down now accordingly. Now it's occupying only 20% of space, and now you can see it has a two on it. But the minute I bump this up just a little bit, there we go. It now is occupying the larger amount of space. 
So you can use that property to kind of figure those out. Of course, one of the things we have here that, that looks, looks pretty trashy right now is we have this uh, container that we have looking at right now. It looks like I, have, I may have another um, label sitting out the side here. Let me go and kill that label. But um, on this container right here, let's make sure we put a gap in here. Maybe 30 pixels. Oh, nope. And let's also have it occupy the entire height of that area. So right now its height is 200 pixels. So we may want to go ahead and tell it to use the, the, um, the, the, the flexible width. Looks good. And let's go ahead and change its height. Here we go. Of this to app.height. You can also use parent.height if you want as well. Here we go. So now it's kind of stretching all this out and that gap looks way too much. We can go ahead and skinny that down to 15 if you want to. All right, so typically speaking, what you can use this for is you can go ahead and, and have like a you know, category one of buttons and then category two of buttons and you would have your kind of opening screen for each of these two sides. So, and as you hit the play button, you'll notice, and as I kind of shrink this down, watch how everything kind of skinnies up and, and works appropriately here. Nice, huh? The same thing works vertically as well. So this simple example, hopefully, is showing you how to kind of build a responsive app using containers and how to nest those. In a future application we build, we'll create a header bar where we can make it where it dynamically shrinks and compresses as well. There's lots of neat things you can do around this, so uh, and hopefully this kind of opens up some ideas for you. That's part of our, our, our training we have at Pragmatic Works. You can find that at pragmaticworks.com. And we also have things like hackathons to help you uh, learn a different way as well, if you want to learn with your own data instead of my data. All right, thanks so much for watching this, and I'll, I'll catch you on our next video, Power Rappers. Bye-bye.